Well, there are basically two tasks that macro policy has to accomplish before it can do anything else. One is it's got to determine the price level, and the second is it's got to make sure that fiscal policy, the debt, is sustainable. And the typical allocation of assignments is we tell the central bank, your job is to control inflation, and we tell the fiscal authority, whenever debt rises, you've got to raise taxes in the future to sustain that debt. But those roles can be reversed. And I think that is what the fiscal theory is essentially saying. The fiscal authority, by not adjusting surpluses to finance debt, can effectively control the price level. And, but then somebody's got to make sure that government debt doesn't blow up. And the way that, that the monetary authority can do that is by permitting inflation to occur that then revalues the debt. The, the quantity theory of, of inflation, of money, was uh, a, an attempt to understand the evolution of the price level, the evolution of inflation through one equation, the very famous MB equals PT. Actually, you need more than one equation to understand the world. Um, I think the physical theory of the price level could be that, could be, it could be helpful in that, because that basically brings another equation to bear. The idea that the real value of the government debt today should be equal to the present value of the real surpluses, uh, primary surpluses uh, the government's collecting. I think trying to understand the world only through that equation is also a mistake. It's both equations working together, which is, is really, I think, uh, important. The fiscal theory has been part of every well-specified monetary theory for ever. You can find it in Adam Smith if you want. But the emphasis uh, has been away from fiscal considerations in most monetary thinking. Uh, now, what brings it to life now? It is the only economically coherent theory of why money has its value. The theories that, that completely ignore fiscal stuff just don't hang together as economics. And it's an exciting moment for us because they failed miserably in describing the world. I think that there are circumstances under which the conventional theory probably works perfectly fine, but we don't happen to be living in those circumstances now. We have been in the U.S. and Europe and in Japan uh, in a situation where the interest rate is at or below zero, and it can't go much below that, and that leaves monetary policy nearly powerless to do much about um, stimulating the economy. Uh, <clears throat> So that, of course, leads to thinking about whether fiscal policy could uh, replace the usual sorts of monetary policy expansionary methods, measures, and to think about that, you need a different kind of theory than what has been standard. What a lot of countries are trying to do to reinflate their economies is keep interest rates extremely low for a long time, even negative nominal interest rates in some countries. And what this theory says is if you're not running the right kind of fiscal policy, that isn't going to help you. And so one thing I think this does is it tries to emphasize that you need to be thinking about monetary and fiscal policy jointly. The standard line you always hear in the newspapers is, well, monetary policy is the only game in town because fiscal policy is so chaotic. And what we're trying to say is, that isn't going to work. I think, though, more deeply, uh, what the fiscal theory of the policy, uh, I'm sorry, what the fiscal theory of the price level points to is a very Milton Friedman, Bob Lucas, Tom Sargent, Chicago approach to things that monetary policy and fiscal policy are not what decision we make today. They're about what set of rules we follow, what are people's expectations, what are the institutions, how do they work. Uh, how, what, what do people think will happen in the future if inflation guts up? Will the government change its deficits? The structure of policy uh, is, is, I think, the right question. And it leads us to rethink what kinds of fiscal policy commitments does the government need to make to get stable inflation over the long run. Going forward with all of our populations aging and uh, all of our promised government payments to the elderly, uh, fiscal policy is going to be front and center for a long time.